I'm gonna show you how to set up fences with a spot on GPS collar. And lucky for you, me, and your dog, it couldn't be any easier. We'll cover two methods for dropping virtual fence posts to create boundaries, and one of them is super quick, like less than two minutes quick. We'll also cover best practices for giving your dog freedom to roam while keeping them safe by accounting for GPS drift, setting up home zones and keep out zones, and so much more. Check out the video description for my latest recommendations because once this video is published, I can't come back and change it. I've been geeking out on invisible dog fences for a little over four years now, and as you may know, recently I've been wearing the collars myself to put them to the test from a dog's perspective. The spot on is the most well thought out and impressive solution I've used to date. A lot of dog owners balk at spot on's price tag, I get it, it's pricey compared to the other options out there that don't require professional installation. But once you get your hands on the spot on, and especially once you take it for a spin, it's really clear that you get what you pay for. This collar was designed by a team that built electronics for the United States military. Soldiers' lives depended on this team's electronics under unthinkably extreme conditions. Their electronics had to perform with perfection, and the team's experience truly shines through with the spot-on GPS fence. Plus, their products are designed, developed, and manufactured in the United States, New Hampshire specifically. That's awesome! So as we'll see in this video, setting up the fence is super simple and quick, but as with any invisible dog fence, setting up the fence is not the last step. The key to success comes with training your dog to use the system. Spot On has easy training modules that show you the step-by-step -step methodology for introducing your dog to the alert, warning, and static correction or vibrations. Through consistent training sessions with positive reinforcements like treats, toys, and praise, your dog will form an understanding of the boundaries and where they're free to roam. What makes Spot On's training program truly unique is that they offer personalized help via a free one-on-one -on -one training session with a certified dog trainer. Yeah, a real life dog trainer. Well, over Zoom, but it still gives you the time and attention needed to set up you and your dog for success. Spot On's training program is straightforward and lets you go at your own pace, allowing you to get started quickly and revisit the training chapters as needed. Alright, so let's talk a bit about getting started with the Spot On GPS dog fence. One of the great benefits of the Spot On, and actually it's a common misconception, is that you don't need a subscription to immediately use these collars. Unlike other GPS collars on the market, the Spot On just works right out of the box. And you can set up a fence without even having to walk outside. But if tracking your dog's location is important to you, and you have good cell reception in your area, then the major benefit of a subscription is that the Spot On has excellent Excellent tracking. It updates every six seconds so you can keep an eye on your pup whether they're inside the fence or they've escaped. A subscription also allows you to receive notifications on your phone if your dog escapes or if your dog's collar's battery is running low. When you open the box, the first thing you'll want to do is plug the collar in and get a good charge on it. A full charge from empty only takes about an hour or two, and there will probably be a bit of life on it when you receive it. In the meantime, you can download the app by searching the App Store or simply scanning the QR code in the manual. You'll want to set up the app by adding a picture of your dog, selecting their icon color, adding their name, adding the serial number of your collar, and then optionally adding their breed, gender, and date of birth. Then the last thing you need to do is turn on your collar and connect it via Bluetooth to your phone. And that's it, you're good to go. Now before I show you the two methods for setting up fences, I want to talk a bit about Spot On's guidelines for setting the boundaries. There are two main points to consider here. The first is that alert and warning tones start at 10 feet from the boundary you set. So make sure that your dog has enough room to pass between two boundaries without tripping any tones. Unless your pet is Crypto the Super Dog, they won't understand the logic if the boundaries are too close together. Spot On recommends a minimum distance of 30 feet for a passageway between the boundary you set and your home or any other structures like that, and they recommend a minimum of 80 feet for the fence width at the narrowest distance. This helps make sure that your dog has so much freedom to roam that even Gunther would be jealous. The other thing to consider is that like all GPS systems, you need to account for GPS drift. There are tons of satellites orbiting the Earth that speak with GPS devices and help them pinpoint a location. As they move throughout the day, the signal from satellite might get temporarily blocked by things like houses, buildings, hills, or dense tree cover. When that change happens, the calculated location for the device will vary a little bit, resulting in this drift. Spot On states that their GPS boundaries may shift less than 10 feet over the course of the day. As a result, they recommend setting up boundaries at least 15 feet from roads or other hazards to make sure that your pet stays safe. All of this taken into account is why Spot On recommends a minimum property size of a half acre. They want your dog to enjoy plenty of freedom within the boundaries you set. Okay, with all of that squared away, now I'm going to show you the first method for setting up fences. We'll start with the quick method, which is drawing the fence in manually. So let's put two minutes on the clock here. Are we ready? Let's start that timer. I'm gonna open up the Spot On app here and I need to turn on my collar. So I'm gonna hold, press and hold the power button until it blinks. Let's turn it on there. And what I need to do is connect to the collar here. And it wants me to update, but I'm not gonna do that right now. And what I would recommend doing first is click track here and just update your location. And while it's doing that, I'm going to come over here to create fence and we're going to draw the perimeter. Let's get started. All right, so here we are. So it's going to, it drops the square for us automatically where we're standing and 
you know, we can drag and drop the fence posts as we'd like. Try to get it out of the trees maybe. And then if we want to add a fence post, we can do that by double tapping, I believe. Oh, just pressing and holding did it. And let's bring that fence post over here. Cool. So that's our fence. We can press finish now, save the fence. We'll call this park fence. And we're good to go. Saving the fence. We're gonna test the fence later. And what we'll wanna do now is load the fence to the collar. It does it automatically. If it doesn't do that, then you wanna you know, do it manually. Um, and then we do wanna turn the fence on. So there we go. The fence is good to go. How did I do on time? Made it, no problem. That was easy. Now I'll show you the second method for setting up fences, which is by walking the fence boundary. This one is actually my preferred method because it's easier to get more precision. All right, now we're gonna set up a fence using the other method and I'm glad the time pressure is off because that was a little stressful. Not too bad, things could be worse. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the fence and click add fence here. And then we're going to walk the fence perimeter. So it's gonna tell you how to do that. Um, we're gonna deactivate the current fence and I'm outside and ready. So what we wanna do is hold the collar with the GPS button facing upwards and uh, phone saying I'm ready to move. So I'm gonna press start here. And basically we just walk and to kind of give it, you know, a little bit of a test, I'm gonna kind of zigzag back and forth here. And uh, basically it just drops the fence post for you without you having to you know, press anything, it just does it automatically, kind of captures your location as you walk here. So that's kind of nice. See if these zigzags are getting picked up. It looks like they are at least to some extent here. And as you can see, there's a pause button here. Basically what you can do is like, if you come to a pond or something like that, you can pause the fence creation, go around the pond and resume it. And on the other side of the pond, uh, you know, it'll just pick, up, pick back up with a straight line across where you had paused. So. Perhaps we can give that a shot in a second here just to see how it looks. All right, so let's hit that pause feature here and just see what happens. So we're paused. Now I'm just gonna walk over here. All right, so in theory, we've gone, you know, around a pond or something like that. So let's press resume and see it just jumped in a straight line there. So that's where we are now. And I'm gonna loop back and approach where we started the fence and at some point, it's going to pick up basically the point where we started the fence and you know realize that we've closed the loop and call it a fence boundary. So let's see here. We're getting there. Yep, there we are. Finish creating the fence, we're done. Let's name it. Save that fence. We're good to go. It's saving. Verifying. And that fence is up and running. Cool, and it's active too. So that's it, very easy to do. So just like that, your fences are up and running. One more thing I wanna show you guys is that Spot On now allows you to add home zones and keep out zones to your fences. Home zones are safe areas within your fence where the collars corrections are deactivated, which are great for marking your house, for example, so your dog can come in and out wearing the collar and not risk any false alarms due to interference. Keep out zones are the same thing, but flipped. If there's an area within your fence that you wanna set as off limits, like a vegetable garden or a kid's playground, you can do that. And what I love about the design here is that you can just draw them in and customize their shape right on your phone. You can get pretty precise. Keep out zones have a minimum size of 30 feet by 30 feet, but no maximum size. Home zones have no minimum or maximum size as far as I can tell. So let's see how it goes adding in home and keep out zones to the fence I just created. All right, so one last thing I wanna show you guys is how to set up keep out zones and home zones. This is a relatively new feature with the spot on, so let's see how it works. All right, so let's tap on that park boundary walk fence that we just made. And we're gonna tap edit fences and zones or zones got it and it basically creates a copy of that fence so the first thing we're going to need to do is open up the fence boundaries a bit because the fence is going to be too small to make keep out zones in i need to apply the 18 posts all right so let's drag this post here and this one here and this one here my thumbs are a little clumsy let's remove some of these posts here Some of these over here too. We don't need them all. Not right now. So let's drag this one over. 
in this one here and remove this one and this one and this one and you know what let's drag this all the way up here so now what we want to do is um, tap the button here to add zones inside the fence that's the square button with the dotted line around it and first let's add a keep out zone so let's let's add a keep out zone over the trees in the parking lot there and if you're too close to the boundary you know it'll give you an alert um, hopefully this position will work it works just fine so let's call this no way all right so let's finish that there oh actually i wanted to edit that one so what i want to do is i can basically you know just like with the fences i can drag it and make it any shape and size that i want So that's the, that's the keep out zone we'll go with. So we'll say finish here. Now let's add a home zone. This is anywhere that the dog can go and the correction is turned off. And let's put that over here. Let's say your, your house actually, you know, goes over the border a little bit. Oh, it can't be set outside the fence. All right, so let's zoom in and say anywhere the dog wants to go inside this area is totally fine and the correction is gonna be turned off. We'll call this safe zone. Excellent. And again, you can change the shape and size of this all you'd like. So anyway, there's good. I'll press finish. So now we've set up a home zone, which is the blue circle or blue boundary. And we've set up a, um, a keep out zone, which is the orange boundary. So we can now tap the X here press save changes um, with let's call this fence park boundary with zones save the fence and it's loading it right up to the collar good to go so we'll come here pick the park boundary with zone fence load that fence and we're up and running that's it so there you have it, setting up fences with a spot on GPS dog fence is a breeze. And again, I just love the precision that you can get with it. And the added benefit of home zones and keep out zones opens up whole new doors for pet owners. Remember to check the video description for my latest recommendations and links to any deals that I may have. You can check out my full review of the spot on GPS dog fence right here on this channel. And I have tons of reviews and comparisons of invisible dog fences and more right here too. Until next time dog lovers, keep those tails wagging.